Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and I live in Utah Zone 6 7 and I have an exciting thing that just happened a little while ago that I wanted to show you and I wanted to talk about a little bit. So let me show you what has happened in my garden recently. Now it is a little bright and sunny. This is the only time of day I had to do my videos. It's kind of a little hot but I wanted to show you this. I am really excited. My yard has now been classified as a Monarch Way station and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what that means, what goes into it, and whether or not you can do this on your own property. Now I thought that getting classified as a Monarch Way station would be a really difficult thing, that you had a lot of qualifications that you had to live up to, but I found that it is really actually not that hard and it's very beneficial. Now I'll put a link down below where you can go to figure out what you need to do to qualify as a Monarch Way Station and how to apply. But basically, there's just a few things that you need to do to qualify. Number one is the size of the project. Now you can be a Monarch Way Station in name, maybe not registered, at any size. So you can do a really tiny area like a pot and attract monarch butterflies, but you're not gonna be able to be registered unless you have at least 100 square feet. That's 10 by 10. Now the upper limit is unlimited. You can be as large as you want. My area is pretty much my front yard and I plan on expanding it to my backyard. The next thing that you need to do is provide the right conditions to grow your plants. You need the proper amount of sun, you need the proper amount of shade, and you actually do need a plan on how you're going to maintain that area. Are you going to water it? Are you going to remove invasives? You know, the maintenance just depends on the type of area that you are classifying as a monarch way station. Next thing you need to provide is shelter for the butterflies and for their larvae. Now, shelter. The way they classify shelter on the website is just planting your plants close enough together that they can get shelter. Now, I thought that you had to have a water source to be able to be qualified as a Monarch Way Station, but I found out that that's no longer a requirement. You do not need a water source. I'm not exactly sure why they removed that. Then you need nectar plants. Anything that provides nectar for monarch butterflies will count, and I am actually going to show you a few of the plants that the monarch butterflies seem to love the most on my property. And then we'll talk a little bit about where you can go to look at more plants that are good for monarch butterflies. And then the last thing is the most important thing. You need host plants for the monarch butterflies to lay their eggs and raise their young. Now for monarch butterflies, it's basically just milkweed. There's many different kinds of milkweed, and I'll show you the types that I have on my property. So let's look at my property and talk a little bit about how it became a monarch way station. So this is the area over here that has my most flowering plants. And it also is the area that is that has the butterfly weed in it. Now, according to the website to be registered, you need to have at least 10 plants of two varieties. But if you have a very large patch of one variety, that could also work. So I went with three different varieties. The first one is my nemesis, but I decided just to let it grow anyway. Let's get over here. I've got to get through all my plants. And the first milkweed that I'm showcasing is the showy milkweed. Now showy milkweed, this one bloomed, uh, it was probably about three weeks ago. We're in the middle of July. So this bloomed, oh, probably beginning to mid June. And this is one of the main weeds and uh, main milkweeds of the state of Utah. It's a showy milkweed. Now this plant is very difficult to contain for me. It reseeds itself and it also grows by long, long runners. So it pops up all over the place. Now the reason I have this one is because I threw set down some seeds in 2010 or 11 thinking it would be fun to have milkweed, then read about it and started ripping out everything that came up. And I ripped it out for years and years and years because I just didn't want that amount of milkweed in my yard. Until last year, I finally decided I wanted to be a, a monarch way station, so I might as well let grow on my property what grows. So we have this showy milkweed right here, and I am not sure, but there is a possibility that I have an egg already. I am not sure, but that might be one. One thing that I do have for sure is not a monarch, but this right here is a lacewing egg. Lacewings are very, very beneficial. 
So I'm excited about that. And I'm hoping that soon I can get, you know, if this is, if this one is not a monarch egg, I'm hoping that soon we can definitely get some more. Now this right here is what the showy milkweed looks like when it first germinates. It's nice. It looks a little innocuous, like it's going to be this cute little plant. So showy milkweed. This is also a nectar producing plant for monarchs and they love it. Now, because people like scientific names, I'll put the scientific names of each of the milkweeds on screen. Now, this one seems to have been a controversial milkweed. This is a Slepius tuberosa, which is just your basic butterfly weed. It's not the tropical milkweed. There's a lot of people who say that monarchs do not lay their eggs on this plant and the larvae don't feed on it. But there are a lot of places that say, yes, this is a host plant plant for monarchs and that they but they don't choose it over the other ones but I love the orange flowers the pollinators seem to absolutely love it as you've seen them kind of feasting on the flowers here so I think it's gorgeous and I am gonna and I've included that as part of my the milkweed on my property now another milkweed that I have that is in bloom actually right now is a narrow leaf milkweed now I actually started these by seed, you know, just a, let's see, how long ago was it? Two years ago, I think. And they seem to be doing well. The flowers are really cute and they bloom after the showy milkweed, which is right over there. So this gives a longer bloom time for the milkweed. So I have one right here. And another one that finished blooming over here that is starting to set seed. So we actually have seed, seed pods starting right there. And we have a new set of blooms coming on. So I'm hoping, you know, I haven't seen any, any eggs on this one, but I'm hoping that eventually we'll start seeing monarch caterpillars on these. Now I have those three varieties of milkweeds in several different areas on that side of the property. Let me show you the nectar plants that I've been using. Now I live up against the Wasatch Front, or the Wasatch Mountains, and there are quite a few different host plants for monarchs up there. One of the main native ones is rubber rabbit brush. Now, rabbit brush is not my favorite looking plant. It spreads quite quickly and it looks, looks like it belongs on a hillside in the wilderness. A lot of people do love them, but uh, the rubber rabbit brush, if you don't mind the way it looks and don't mind the way it spreads, that's one of the main sources for nectar for monarch butterflies here on the Wasatch Front. Let me show you another one. So Anise Hyssop. We actually had a butterfly, a little tiny one. I don't know exactly what variety it was. It was going a little too fast. Wasn't a monarch, but anyway, it just about hit my camera, showing its appreciation for the Agastache. So this is Anise Hyssop or Agastache, and Agastache is another favorite for butterflies. And I have that several different places on my property. Now I do like to deadhead most of them before they go to seed because Agastache really seems to reseed itself prolifically. I don't mind it, but there are times where it does get a little bit much. So I do deadhead that. And another one is our native sunflowers. Now this is another plant that really does cause me problems sometimes. It reseeds itself so prolifically that if I let these seeds if I let these flower heads go to seed, like this one is in the center here. Let's see if we can get up here. There's one in the center going to seed. If I let that go to seed, they produce thousands and thousands of little plants that I have to weed out of my yard. I don't want thousands of sunflowers, so I always choose one out of all the ones that reseed themselves, because this is just a reseeded plant. Comes back every year. I choose one that has pl placed itself in the best spot and allow one of them to grow and then I deadhead most of it. But look how gorgeous that is. So monarch butterflies actually love the native sunflowers as do most of the pollinators in this area. This is a favorite, favorite plant for just about everything. And then if you don't mind all the reseeding, you can leave the seed heads for the birds. And they're just really pretty and cheery. I really like them. And you could do regular sunflowers, but I really like the native sunflowers. Number one, because they're easy to grow, they reseed themselves, I don't have to worry about it. And, and everything seems to love them. Now, wide flat flowers also seem to be something that monarch butterflies love. Right here, we've got some zinnias. 
these are just the uh, little zinnias. I haven't seen any butterflies on these recently, but in years past I've seen them. Right now we've got a little something. What is that guy? I don't even know what he is. But he's enjoying the zinnia. Now another one that butterflies seem to love that I didn't find on any of the lists, surprisingly, are the coneflowers. Butterflies tend to visit these quite a bit, as do all the other pollinators. But, you know, you can see this cute little honeybee there visiting it, plus all of the little native bees that come and visit this patch. But I also have coneflowers. Now this is a plant that is very controversial, I guess, in the butterfly world. This is a butterfly bush, a pugster butterfly bush. And I do see a ton of butterflies visiting it, but I guess from what I've read, it's not the best source of nectar for butterflies. And now we're on to the absolute favorite of all the butterflies in my yard. This is a chase tree, Vitex agnus castus. And I actually usually don't see monarch butterflies until this starts fl flowering. You can see all the different pollinators that are on it. I don't know if you can see them buzzing around, but they love this plant. Let me show you a video of the first male butterfly of the season. He was absolutely gorgeous. And as his wings are folded, you can see a little spot on the bottom half of his wing. I guess that is the male's pheromone spot. It has scent in it that the males use to attract the females. And that's how you tell it's a male. The females don't have that little mark. The females instead have wider black lines through their wings. Now I've only seen that one male this year and he's not out right now. The time I see them the most is just before evening falls. When it cools off a little bit, that's when he's usually here flitting around this plant. So because this is the favorite plant of the monarch butterflies, I think I'm going to be establishing maybe some narrow leaf milkweed up here. I'd also like to try antelope horn. That's a different type of milkweed. But this seems like it would be prime real estate for some more milkweed. And I'm definitely gonna be adding a patch or two of milkweed to my backyard here, my backyard food forest. Now, I don't know if I've been considering putting a patch of showy milkweed back here. I just don't know if I wanna deal with it back here. We haven't had an invasion like we have in my front yard. If I put it back here, it's, it may end up being a constant battle again. For sure, we'll do some narrow leaf milkweed, and I may even want to try an antelope horn back here. We'll see. Now, there's another variety called swamp milkweed that is recommended for Utah in areas that get more water. Now, this is just my little annual bed. I just let whatever I had planted there in the past that reseeds itself reseed. We've got cosmos and zinnia, a lot of calendula that needs to be cut back. In the early spring, we get the Johnny Jump Ups and pansies. I also plant my annual veggies like kale. And we've got some chard down here. So, yeah, and we got, and we've got purple leaf basil in the back. So I think this might be a good area to try out the swamp milkweed. It does get a lot more water. It's attached to my garden bed irrigation system. So we'll see if I can get some seeds and get some started there and put some swamp milkweed here. So no matter what the size of your garden, you can actually start creating habitats for monarch butterflies. If you only have a balcony or a deck, put out some pots with flowers that monarchs like. Put out maybe a pot of milkweed. I don't know how well milkweed does in pots. I know they need drier conditions and some of them have larger root systems, but try it and see what happens. If you wanna be registered, you do need a 10 by 10 area. And if you have a 10 by 10 area that already has some plants that are good for monarch butterflies, add some milkweed to it and see how that goes. So I would like to challenge you to go down in the description Look up that link, see if you qualify for a Monarch Way Station or if you have an area that can be developed into a Monarch Way Station and go ahead and try it. The butterflies are absolutely gorgeous and they do need our help. And I would also love to hear your favorite nectar plants for butterflies, especially if you live in the state of Utah, especially northern Utah, because I'm always looking for more flowers to be able to plant to help our native wildlife. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden day.